We're going to check out a Falcons UFL signing and then talk Michael Penix. But before we do, help us take down Vikings now in a subscriber race. We're racing them to the next 1,000 subscriber benchmark. We've got a subtle lead on them, but let's take them down and then let's catch them in subscribers. Welcome on in to Falcons Today. Coming up on today's show, Atlanta signed a player, so we'll break that down for you. And then I want to look at what ESPN had to say about Michael Penix after uh, minicamp and OTAs and all those spring practices. But let's get you guys familiar with the newest member of the Atlanta Falcons, Jared Jones-Smith. Now, the signing comes in from Aaron Wilson, who loves to get the 90th man on the roster signings out there. I've yet to see a corresponding roster move, so be on the lookout for maybe someone going out the door as Joan Smith comes in. But let's get you guys familiar with the newest member of Atlanta Falcons um, offensive line, which is Jared Joan Smith, who played for the St. Louis Battlehawks in 2024. He appeared in six NFL games, regular season games, that is, between 2020 and 2021, making three appearances for the Las Vegas Raiders and three appearances for the Baltimore Ravens. He has also played on roughly half of the team's practice squad, so he's been all over the league. Former UDFA out of Pittsburgh, really big, massive human being, six foot seven, 320 pounds. He came out as a guard, and then he made the transition to tackle, and that's where he was last year for the Battle Hawks. but I wouldn't be surprised to see him maybe be a little bit more flexible on the offensive line. The updated depth chart, he's not going to crack the starting lineup, or to be honest, even one of the first backups, I still think that belongs to Tyler Vrabel and Storm Norton, but he will compete for a roster spot with Another guy who came over from spring football, like we had Wesley last year get signed by Atlanta along with LaCal London and four other players in total out of the UFL, USFL, XFL. I, I can't keep track. I never watched the spring football league. So we have seen the Falcons poach the spring rosters before and they're making their first splash this spring here. But ultimately, this is a depth guard signing. I don't think we're going to see him have a big role or Big roles being mean or you know going too far with it. I don't think we're going to see him have a role at offensive tackle. I think he projects to be more of a guard in the NFL, or at least for the Falcons, because they already have a good amount of depth at tackle with Vrabel and Storm Norton. But tackle is a cornerstone piece, so you can never have too many of guys at that position. But Atlanta's offensive line, if we can just talk about that as a whole for a second, I know I've been glazing it all offseason long, but I really do think it's a top five offensive line of football. The weakest member of the unit last year was a rookie left guard, Matthew Bergeron, who was a second round pick out of Syracuse. I think the sky is only going to go higher for him and he's only going to get better and better. So if that's the slowest member of the relay team here, Atlanta's got a really good offensive line, which kind of leads me to this trivia question, which I think this would be a fun thing for us to do during the dog days of the offseason until Falcons training camp gets underway, which, by the way, is July 24th. But some trivia here for everyone. Game started since 2014. Jake Matthews is number one. I do feel like he's one of the most underappreciated Falcons players out there. Matt Ryan, Grady Jarrett, Julio Jones follow suit. But which player is fifth? Playing with Atlanta from 2016 to 2021, and making 83 starts. Let me know who has the fifth most starts for the Atlanta Falcons since 2014 when the Falcons selected Jake Matthews in round number one. Okay, let's switch gears now and talk about Michael Penix because ESPN put out an article going through all 32 teams that had a, well, all teams that had a first round draft pick and what their first round selection looked like during the spring practices. So here's what Mark Ramadri Ram Ramondi had to say about Michael Penix. Penix has shown flashes of brilliance this spring, especially on the deep ball, but he has, but he also has been plagued with inconsistency, missing some touch passes. Not a huge surprise for a rookie QB. Penix has mostly worked with the team's backups, with veteran Taylor Heineke seemingly second string behind Cousins, at least at this point. And I agree with a lot of what Mark had to say there, especially on the deep ball versus the touch passes because that's what Michael Penix's M.O. was at Washington. Compare him to the last three quarterbacks to go number one overall in the NFL draft. Here are their stats from their final collegiate seasons. Michael Penix, probably the best when it comes to the deep ball after Joe Burrow and 
listen, if we're getting compared to Joe Burrow, that's a good conversation to be having. But Penix on 20-plus yard passes down the field, completion percentage, 41.8. That's slightly higher than Trevor Lawrence and just behind Bryce Young by a hair. Uh, more yards. I mean, you can combine Young and Lawrence's yards, and Penix also, almost passes them. Touchdown to interception ratio. So there's no doubt that Michael Penix is, or at least in college, was one of the best downfield passers. Now, it's not always going to be an apples-to-apples -apples translation to the NFL, but I do feel like we are seeing what Michael Penix is best at, which is airing it out and having the confidence and the accuracy and the velocity to go deep. And now he's got to take some time to just rough out some of the you know, short and intermediate passes that he needs some work on. All right, before we get on to the rest of the Penix report, though, if you want to get your hands on some new Falcons gear, we've got it available for you guys at chatsports.com slash Falcons combo. There's not one, but there's two shirts waiting for you, plus they're 25% off. So get this awesome deal today, chatsports.com slash Falcons combo. I put that link in the comments and description of today's video. Now, I want to circle back to what Mark had to end his write-up with, which is Taylor Heineke being the backup at the moment. And I've got Penix as QB2, but it's a very preliminary and rough look at the depth chart. But ultimately, I don't think this is highly at all unusual for a rookie quarterback to be at the bottom of the depth chart, or not even just quarterback, rookies in general, when they report to spring practices. Like, teams are not going to just hand starting jobs over to rookies before they really either earned it or if they weren't top 10 selections, which Penix was, but also we know that there's Kirk Cousins on top of him in the depth chart. So I'm not phased, concerned, or worried whatsoever about Taylor Heineke out of the gates being QB2. These are glorified flag football practices. Let's have a deeper conversation when the pads come on. We've played some preseason games, and we get a much better picture and idea as to what Penix looks like as a real quarterback with, you know, all other 10 players on offense and also 11 players on defense going up against him versus passing against the wind. So nothing unusual here to see that the um, initial spot on the depth chart goes to the veteran player and we can circle back in training camp. But no, zero concern level over, ooh, is Penix having a bad rookie mini camp and mini camp and OTAs because Heineke's ahead of him in the depth chart? No, I'm not going to buy into that or buy one stock of that whatsoever. So ultimately, when it comes to what I want to see out of Michael Penix this year, I want to see some preseason highlights. We're likely not going to see much of Penix at all in the regular season unless Cousins gets injured or we got a blowout game in the fourth quarter. Michael Penix is knowingly going to be on the bench for much of, if not the entire 2024 regular season. So I think everyone's just looking for you know, some football porn to kind of get them through, I wouldn't say through the Kirk Cousins era, but if you're already excited about the Michael Penix era for that to get underway in 2025, 6, or 7, let's get some preseason highlights going right now so Falcons fans can kind of take a big sigh of relief going, okay, I know that pick in April was very contentious and very room dividing, but after seeing what we saw in the preseason, Atlanta looked like they have their quarterback of the future after the Kirk Cousins era. So what year will Michael Penix take over from Kirk Cousins? I'm not going to even give 2024 a remote possibility. Injury happens, okay, but I don't really count that as like taking over versus just an injury happens and you rising up the depth chart as a result. You think it's going to be after one season, two seasons, three years? Like For me, I would say Michael Penix is on the bench for 2024, 2025, and then we can have maybe a much more lively debate in 2026 after two years of Kirk Cousins. But for now, I think Cousins is the starting quarterback for at least two seasons. And there's a good chance three as well if he plays at a high level and the Falcons are winning, right? Why bench, it, bench him if everything's going well? All right, that trivia question, by the way, a little drum roll, please. Deion Jones made 83 starts for the Falcons defense from 2016 to 2021. So if you got it right, let me know in the comment section. I hope you enjoy these trivia questions. I think they're a fun way to kind of keep us a little bit more entertained during the slow news period of the offseason.